two men were recently exonerated after DNA evidence indicated that they were both actually not guilty in the rape and murder of an 11-year-old back in the 1980s. Those two men were Henry Lee McCollum and Leon Brown. Now, uh, they appear to have made confessions in this case, but uh, IQ testing indicated that they were actually mentally disabled, and there was some evidence indicating that they were coerced into signing those confessions. Now, the prosecutor in the story is Joe Freeman Britt, and he actually did 40 death penalty convictions in 20 years. So he was known as a very, very tough prosecutor. He was very harsh. He would go after people aggressively. And recently, there was a profile written about him that kind of talked about his tactics and his lack of remorse in these cases, especially in cases where uh, people have been exonerated due to DNA evidence. Now, the person who actually took over his job is a relative, and the relative is the one who has spoken to the press about some of the tactics that he utilized as a prosecutor. Prosecutor, and he basically said that, you know, Britt was a big bully. That was the way he got the job done. Everyone was afraid of him, including the judges. And when Britt was asked about that statement made by his relative, here's what he had to say. Well, let's say if I was a bully, he's a pussy. How about that? Okay, let's pause here before we give you the other devastating quote. Uh, this Joe Freeman Britt is what I think is, is one of the worst people I've ever uh, heard of. Now, let's give you more details so you understand what I'm saying. Uh, McCullum, uh, who was the one on death row, they were both initially on death row, right? Uh, they had an appeal, McCullum remained on death row, and Brown got a life sentence. Mm -hmm. um, after he signed the confession, it was so obvious he didn't know what he was doing that he said, oh, okay, great, I signed it, can I go home now? Mm -hmm. he, they led him to believe, because he was mentally disabled, that if he just signed away his life, that he would be able to go home, right? He obviously didn't know what he was doing. It doesn't really matter because we now have the DNA evidence. They are 100% innocent. They have been completely cleared. Now, Britt is told about this, and in the story that I did about it last week, he said, no, I'd still keep him in jail. Yeah, he's totally indifferent. Like he, he doesn't care at all about what he has done. Now, before we go on with the story, as I mentioned, he has successfully convicted 40 people in 20 years that got the death penalty. Only two of them have been executed, but who knows whether or not those two people were guilty or innocent, considering some of the tactics he used in order to prosecute and convict people. Now, they had a cigarette butt on the scene. They refused to test it for DNA. Turns out a couple of weeks after they got these confessions, uh, the neighbor of the girl who was raped and killed was busted on another rape charge of a young girl. And he even said at one point, oh, I don't know who it is, but it's definitely not those two guys. I know, it's, okay. inc it's incredible. It's obviously the neighbor, but they didn't bother investigating because we already got the confessions. And God forbid anybody should mess with the career of Joe Freeman Britt, because then he'd have to go back and say, well, no, the cops got the wrong confessions. I pursued the wrong guy. No, I'm never wrong. And in the trials, this asshole would quote the Bible. He kept quoting yep. the Bible. Now, this is the same guy that turns around and says, well, if you don't convict innocent people and execute them, then you're a pussy. Yep. Okay, because that's what Jesus would have done. So there's another element to the story that drove me crazy. Apparently there was a beer can found on the scene that had the fingerprints of the person who actually did the rape and the murder. And they never actually did the testing. They didn't test the fingerprints to see if they could find a match. Keep in mind that this is the same exact prosecutor who was prosecuting the case where the actual rapist had done the exact same crime to another girl. But he decided not to connect the two because it would have been inconvenient for him and the tactics he used to prosecute Henry Lee McCollum and Leon Brown. Now, after that information was given to him or after he was questioned about the lack of um, testing for the beer can, he basically said, said, well, I don't think that I did anything wrong. I mean, anyone could have left that beer can there. Just because a different rapist had left the beer can there doesn't mean that he was linked to that rape. That okay. was his reasoning behind that. Now, now if, you, if he actually believes that, then he's one of the dumbest prosecutors we've ever had. Yeah. So these guys raped her, and then another rapist strolled on by, had a beer, and left it there next to the dead body, and then just left. Can anyone actually believe that? He doesn't believe it. He's okay. just trying to cover his tracks. Of track. course not. Yeah. So then they ask him, well, look, these guys had IQs in the 50s and 60s. They're clearly disabled. And here's his classy response to that. When we tried those cases, every time they would bring in shrinks to talk about how retarded they were. And it went on and on and on. Blah, blah, blah. That guy was a prosecutor for decades. 
he put 40 people on death row. The first thing they should do in North Carolina is investigate every single one of those cases before we wrongly execute somebody this guy put away, right or wrong. Because obviously he never gave a damn about the truth. Yeah. He never gave a damn about justice. And 40 people were on death row because of him.